this little RV telescopic mount for putting this Starlink up in the air takes work. A little more than I thought. I thought that this was going to be plug and play. It wasn't. Stay tuned. Hey, while this episode is not about Starlink per se, I do want to express how much I appreciate what the Starlink technology brings to RV users. At the end of this episode, I'm going to give three specifics about why, in my opinion, Starlink is a superior device for helping stay connected than anything else that's available. So here's the thing. For Coral and I, when we go RVing, it's not about getting away from it all. We have seven kids. We have eight, almost nine grandkids. We have personal and professional relationships. And we have the communities that we're involved in through social media. So I don't want to get away from all of that. I want to share out our adventures and hear the adventures and where those in our communities are at in their lives. Those relationships are important to my emotional well-being, my mental health, and my overall sense of motivation. And staying in touch with those communities takes work, just like this little RV telescopic mount for putting this Starlink up in the air takes work. Uh, a little more than I thought. So Howard here at 82 Maple with what is becoming an all too familiar theme where I get something that uh, an attachment or a tool that is supposed to be plug and play right out of the box, but it turns out it isn't. So the telescopic mount for Starlink is a wonderful little device made by the folks at EZ RV Products. That's E-E-Z or Z, depending on which side of the border you're on, uh, RV Products. And in theory, this works wonderfully. Just take Starlink, pop it into the mount here, uh, turn this so it's locked in, well designed, give the pole a little twist, lift it up. I'm not, I can only take it up so high because I've got this in its RV, uh, under the RV shelter roof, and there we go. But I can extend this fully six feet above the camper height. It folds down into less than four feet. It clamps on to the vertical stair rail, or so it was advertised. So somehow the folks at EZ RV Products missed the reality that not all vertical uh, stair mounts, which this was advertised as fitting onto, are not one inch. This Arctic Fox has an inch and a half vertical stair rail, which meant that uh, these brackets right here simply would not fit. Um, I had to find a piece of 36 inch long, one inch metal pipe, drill it, take some of those uh, little plastic uh, spacers that come with uh, TV wall mounts, uh, insert them, quarter inch bolts. That was after painting this and then clamping this on. I had to turn it at a little bit of an angle because these plastic mounts that I had available to me just weren't quite big enough. Yeah, I would have liked to have them a little bit thicker. And that wasn't the only little issue that I found. Um, so this bottom mount uh, has, of course, a bottom in it for this to sit securely on, but this opening here is fully half an inch bigger than this pole, which meant that as I went to tighten these set bolts, which are really what secure it into this bottom mount, uh, vertical kept trying to slide sideways up against either this edge or this edge. And that just didn't make me comfortable, meaning if one of these bolts came loose, 
uh, a little bit, this was going to slide sideways and then be completely loose and in danger of being dislodged. So what I did is I uh, wrapped this, clamped it into a vise, and behind where you see this bolt, I drilled a little concave hole, just touching it a little bit with about a three eighths of an inch bit after hitting it with a center punch. And uh, so these bolts are now secured. If they work loose a tiny little bit, this is not going to dislodge. It's not gonna slide sideways or anything else. So in principle, again, this works wonderfully. What always amazes me is that the solution to these kinds of issues are often very, very simple. So two things. One, I think it would be relatively simple for the folks at Easy Mount to simply offer a bracket that would accommodate up to two inches and then just a series of inserts that could be slipped in all the way down from two inches to one and three quarter, one and a half, one and a quarter and one inch. That would have helped enormously. Secondly, for the uh, discrepancy of, an, of half an inch between the mount and the vertical pole, just a little spacer unit that would fit in there would have been absolutely fabulous and just made things so much easier. You know, I'm really fortunate in that here on this hobby farm, I've got all sorts of stuff laying around that I can press into service for something like, to resolve something like this. But had I been going to an RV dealer, by the time the dust settled, at very minimum, they would have charged me an additional hour of labor, plus probably $50 minimum in shop supplies to give me something like I have here in order for this uh, to be mounted. There simply wasn't an option from the folks at Easy Mount RV products to go with something uh, larger than a one inch mounting pole. Uh, now, what is it we were trying to accomplish with all of this? Well, it's to get Starlink up in the air and uh, on this particular unit, uh, Coral and I really have uh, two uses for Starlink. One in a more permanent setting uh, where we're in an RV campground. But secondly, we find uh, it just terrific to spontaneously pull over to a rest area and watch uh, a sporting event. Uh, we love watching motor racing. That often happens midday, North American West Coast time or uh, there may be a Sunday afternoon football game on, uh, Coral's Green Bay Packers uh, or San Francisco playing, and uh, just to pull over and literally have connectivity within two minutes. We just pop the uh, Starlink right out of a little compartment up here that we use for storage. Uh, the cord is wired all the way into our inside modem through the inside uh, channels and we can take this out, pop it up, and that can be 10 feet up in the air uh, by the time uh, it's fully extended. So that's the one use. Obviously, with the rear awning here, we're not going to be able to use this mount with the awning out. And so that's going to be at least 50% of the time that we're uh, set up at an RV campground that we're not going to be able to use that vertical mount. And so what we have, if you're acquainted with Starlink, is uh, we've got the on the ground mount and uh, the stock Starlink mount lost two of its legs. We're not gonna get into how that happened. And so we've modified it, but what's really handy uh, is that we can drop Starlink in here. We've got a 50 foot cord and that's what I'm going to jump into next. At the outset, I promised you I was going to share three things as to why, in my opinion, Starlink is a superior connectivity solution for RVers. Number one, it's reliability and it's bandwidth. There's a number of RVers that are suggesting just going with a cell service with unlimited uh, usage. 
is a terrific answer and it probably is for them. I won't dispute it because I don't know their situation. But for Coral and me, where we end up camping, uh, 50% of the time, there is simply no cell service in that area. And so that's an issue. And often, or we actually haven't run into a situation yet where there's no cell service, where we have not been able to get service through Starlink. The additional bandwidth that Starlink has over cellular services. Uh, I, it, no surprise to this audience, that I'm uploading and downloading uh, YouTube content with my editor on any given day of the week, whether we're traveling or not. And I believe that overall I've experienced better bandwidth with Starlink than I would with a cellular service. Number two, it's portable. And what I'm comparing Starlink to now is the satellite systems that come with many RVs. In fact, it came stock on this camper. Point being that many RV parks uh, thoughtfully provide treed sites to uh, give some shade to the campers. And uh, uh, so a satellite or in fact Starlink require line of sight to a circling satellite and rely on that for their signal. Uh, so a satellite mount on the top of the camper roof, roof, one is pretty much hooped. Whereas with Starlink, I have a 50 foot cord. So I've got about five feet of cord inside the camper to my modem, which means I have another 45 feet to go from here in order to find a spot where I can get uh, a shot at open sky and 50% of the time in treed sites all we have to do is walk Starlink out 20 feet that way or 20 feet that way and we've got a clear shot at the sky and we've got full internet coverage. One last thing on the portability issue you know what in the event uh, of a family member or friend that is traveling when we're not traveling, I also have the flexibility that I can loan the Starlink unit out to them. So nothing special there. It truly is completely portable. Number three, I only pay when I play. And uh, with the satellite systems, my experience to date has been that uh, at least the subscriber services that are available to me, I have to take out an annual subscription. With Starlink, uh, I only pay for any month in which I use the unit. I can turn it on or off at will by clicking a couple of buttons over the internet and paying a very modest, I think here in Canada, we pay a $25 monthly administration fee. And that's it. So here we are. I just want to say huge thanks to this audience for staying connected with Coral and me. It means the world to us. And so two thumbs, eight fingers, moving forward, more RVing to come. Too much fun.